classes, we have discussed about the political economy in the international system. And today, we're going to delve into details about global trade and finance. And just like any other report that we are doing, we have to look at first the overview of what we are um, going to be discussing today. So, of course, first we will talk about the global trade and finance. How much is it in today's stage? Also, we will talk about the globalization over the past um, five centuries. Our group believes that in order for us to be able to understand today, um, we have to at least have a background of what happened in the past. Also, we will talk about the gross international capital movement, foreign exchange. Um, we will also talk about the top 10 traders in the whole world. Um, the top 10 currencies. Also, madadaanan natin yung international organizations as regulators and facilitators. Um, These international organizations, namely um, the WTO and the IMF, its key functions, and also the IMF's quotas and voting power. And alam naman natin itong lahat na tayo, we are a Ano, parang global system type. Parang we are interdependent with each other. But as we study this report, we have learned that um, interdependence in terms of economics has also its own share of risk and dangers. And that's what we're gonna um, discuss then in this report. We will also conclude with everything. And to start with, um, let us hear from Jezebel Cidro to discuss the introduction of global trade and finance. Today everyone, I'm going to discuss about the global trade and finance. So, uunahin natin kung ano ba yung global trade. Um, a global trade is also known as the international trade um, or it's simply the export and imports of goods and services across the international boundaries. So, unahin natin kung ano ba ang export. Ang export kasi is a, um, is a good and services that pinuproduce ng isang country and the para it purchase ng other country. Dito kasi sa export, it doesn't really matter kung ano yung goods and services na yon at kung paano siya ipapadala. Dito, ang way ng papapadala kasi sa export ay it can be shaped by sent by email or sent by email. It can be carry personal luggage on a plane or it can be produced domestically and sold to someone to um, foreign country. Ganun yung paraan o ganun yung pagpapadala ng isang for ano ng isang ex ng export na ah, sorry um yung ang mahalaga talaga kasi yung export kasi yung export kasi um ini-help niya na mag-grow yung isang nation at ini-encourage talaga ng government na gawin ang export dahil nga um natutulungan nitong uh, mag-increase yung revenues mag increase ng job and it can raise the um, standard of living mga tao sa isang bansa na yon and it can increase the foreign currency reserves and it can increase the liquidity and enable government manage inflation efficiency kaya sobrang halaga ng isang export sa isang bansa so next naman is import Kung ang export ay inilalabas ng isang country, dito naman sa import, kung ano ipinapasok ng other country para sa isang kan ibang country. No, oh, oh, tama. Um, goods and services that en enter into country for sales are called the imports. Ayun yung imports na sinasabi nila. So, ayun yung pinagkaiba ng dalawa ang export ay nalalabas, ang import at pinapasok. So, next naman natin is the um, yung 
yung meron kasing dalawang ano sa global trade which is the comparative advantage and the opportunity cost so ang unang thing tatalakayin is about the comparative advantage so comparative advantage kasi it has in ito kasi yung economic term that that refers to an economic ability to produce goods and services at a lower opportunity cost than other cost than that the of trade partner o ito yung sinasabi nating um binibent o sin um ability ito yung ability ng isang company na ibenta yung goods nila and services at a low at, at a lower price um um halimbawa nito is ta halimbawa England and Portugal. Sa England, ang cloth nila, e binibenta nila yon into 100 at saka yung wine into 120. So, ang ginawa ng Portugal, para mas kumita sila o mag-increase yung um, mag-stronger yung sales margin nila, is binabaan nila yung price. Naging 90 na lang yung cloth at naging 80 na lang yung wine. Ganun yung ano, yung yung way, yung ano, para ipakita yung perfect na ano ng competitive advantage. Next is the opportunity cost. Um, um, the opportunity cost is a benefit, profit, or a value of something that must be given acquired to achieve um, something else. Um, ito yung land, money, time, ganon, that can be put alternative uses every action choice or decision as associate it is the opportunity cost example na natin sa opportunity cost is yung bread and guns or the domestic um domestic investment or the defense spending kasi sabi dito um the more you the more the more the more guns you produce the less funds available to invest the public school in and the infrastructure so if you in um the more you invest a domestic economy the less you can spend on a defense so ganun yung takbo ng opportunity cost La next is the finance um yung finance kasi is a broad term of the described activities associated with the banking um leverage or the debt, credits, capital, markets, money, and investment. Finance also that encompasses um, the oversight, creation, and study of money, banking, editing, crediting, something ganyan. Ganyan yung financial. Basta may kinalaman siya sa pera. Ganyan. Additional lang sa finance, um, um, yung finance is the important tool Um, to find the exchange rate, compare inflation rates, get an idea about investing, international debt securities, um, and ascertain, ascertain the economic status of other countries and judge the foreign markets. Kasi sa finance, di ba, dun yung current, yung currency ng isang bansa, yung exchange, at saka yung sa Um, yung pagkakautang ng ganun pagkakautang ng ano di ba nagpapahiram kasi sila ng funds yun so sa finance meron financial system so sa financial system um, um, mahalaga siya kasi um, the financial system plays the um, critical role in the economy um, it enables the Um, financial interm interm may intermediation process which the facilities the the facilities the flow of the funds between the savers and the um, borrowers thus ensuring that financial resources are allocated efficiently towards promoting economic growth and development so ayun yung importance ng kung bakit mahalaga yung Um, financial system. Yes. 
So, next kong ita topic is about how global trade and finance works today. So, una na dyan ang volume of trade in goods and services. So, habang, habang tumatagal ang panahon, nagkakaroon tayo ng advancement. At kaakibat ng advancement nito ang paglugo ng technology. Um, ang techno ginagamit yung nag nagkaroon tayo ng technology para mas mapadali ang trading system na nangyayari yung pakikipaglaban ng pakikipagkalakalan natin sa iba't ibang bansa so next is dito the financial transaction yung financial transaction is example nito yung mga um, money transfer business corporation at saka yung financial institution dito um yung um dito yung kung paano kung paano nagkakaroon ng advancement ng trade ang advancing advancement yung trading system in terms of um goods and services as long as the money um next is the um explosion of cross economic interaction um dito pumapasok yung Bretton Woods organization or the um what you call this, the um, International Monetary Fund uh, and the World Bank. Um, ito yung existing institution at ina-under nito is yung various components of the um, UN o yung mga agencies. Itong mga to, ito yung um, um, borders ng economic. So, sa UE naman, um, sa UE and the um, Organization of American State, uh, they craft a law and practices. Um, ano bang dahilan kung ba tayo nagkakalo? Para magkaroon, para maiwasan yung conflict. At saka, syempre, um, dahil sa pride, may kanya-kanya tayong opinion. May opinion siya, may opinion ka, may opinion ako. So, kung walang law, para sa magkakaroon ng conflict kasi, ipupush natin kung ano yung standard natin, kung ano yung gusto natin, kung ano yung pinapoint natin, pinaglalaban natin. Kaya, ginawa sila ng, um, ng law o ng standard para matigil yung conflict. So, para sa yung practices? Yung practices kasi, um, yung nagamit yun sa way ng, ano, ng way ng pakipag-interact natin sa other country, yung in terms of economic, economics, ganun, economic, economic, ay economics kung paano pa mapapalago yung goods and services na yun sa isang bansa na yun ginawa nila yun para maging organize yung mga country kung ipinupush nila kung ano ba dapat na klaseng produkto yung kailangan pang i-improve ano yung produktong kailangan pang mag um, mag 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 improve na so nagamit nila yun, ginawa nila yung law and practices na yun para lang sa ikin na ikabubuti ng lahat. So, nakakatulong ito para mas masabi natin o mas maplano pa natin ng organize kung ano ba yung plano natin in terms of economically. That's all. Thank you. So, hi mga, hi mga classmates. Sa mga manonood nito, uh, kung sa nakikita nyo, nakaganto ko kasi ayaw ko mahawa sa mga COVID. So, safe lang. So, nandito ako para mag-report ng globalization in over 5 centuries. So, first, let's define globalization. So, sabi, Globalization is the process by which business or other organizations develop international influence or start operating on an international scale. Yun yung meaning daw ng globalization. But para padalian, globalization is a term used to describe how trade and technology have made in the world into more connected and interdependent place. So, yun yung meaning ng globalization. So, balik tayo dun sa ano globalization in over 5 centuries. So, sinasabi, nag-start ang globalization in 15 centuries. So, kung pamilyar kayo sa galleon trades, uh, galleon trades, European colonialism, 
sinasabi yun yung, yun yung birth ng globalization kung para sa buong mundo so yung globalization eh so meron kasing graph dyan sa globalization which is ang x-axis is yung time yung siyempre independent ng independent variable naman yung time eh so yun tapos ang y-axis is yung GDP ng bawat country so hindi ko na siya sinulat kasi explain ko na lang sa grid lang so sinasabi doon over the past 5 centuries so, over the 5 centuries maraming ups and downs na nangyari sa globalization mainly because of history ano ba nangyari noon meron tayong French Revolution meron tayong renaissance spirit mga ganun yung time na tumaas yung ganun may bumaba kasi may nangyaring gera so sinasabi rin dito na ang greatest decline ng globalization is when nung pumutok yung dalawang world war namely the world war 1 and the world war 2 but after that globalization tumas tumas ulit yung graph after ng dalawang world war so meaning to say na ang globalization and ang mga ang mga pagtaas ng GDPs ng mga bawat bansa is na-define sa pangyayari din sa buong mundo. So, nung may gera, mababa. As in, bagsak. Walang globalization. Walang trade na mangyari kasi gera eh. So, So, sa ngayon, sinasabing ito yung pinaka-stable na time na part ng globalization kasi nga we are at peace. So basically, the figure will give you an idea of how much the world's economic activity is happening across the borders and what are the times and the history wherein there is an increase or decrease in terms of economic growth as explained by the Hi guys, ang topic ko ngayon is Gross International Capital Movement. Sa bagay na ito, pinag-uusapan ay pakikipagkalakalan sa ibang bansa. Siyempre, si gusto ng mga may pagkalakalan, maganda yung servisyo ng kanilang bilang pagkukuhanan ng gamit. Ang madalas na, ang madalas na tinitrade is like mga damit, gamit, gamit, mga gadget, Tsaka yung mga tangible na gamit. May mga bagay din na hindi tangible na ginagamit na pwedeng ipalit at na pwedeng ipag-trade o ipagpalitan. Gaya na lang ng edukasyon, financial services, bank, bank accounts, um, foreign, uh, foreign investment. Tapos sa chart, sa chart na ito, is may kita natin na noong 1980 hanggang 2005 ay merong magandang pag-angat sa pagkikipagkalakalan sa ibang bansa. At sa at dahil sa pag-angat ng percentage ng GDP na ito, masasabi natin na malaki ang umiikot na pera sa ating mundo. Yun ang Gross International Capital Movement. Salamat! Yan. So, when we talk about foreign exchange kasi, it is very important na, of course, first, we will know what is the meaning of foreign exchange. And aside from that, may tatlo kasi parang ideas or concepts na dapat maintindihan natin when it comes to foreign exchange. First is the currency speculation. Namaya mas ma explain ko na. Pero currency speculation plays a big role in um, foreign exchange. Ano ba yung foreign exchange? Foreign exchange is um, trading a currency for another currency. To simply put, let me give you an example. I am in a vacation. I am in a foreign country who doesn't use peso as a currency. So, I will trade my peso to whatever currency that place is using para magamit ko. 
that is foreign exchange. And in foreign foreign exchange, um, may mga actors. One of them is the investors. Who are these people? These people are those who strategically make news of this exchange to make profit out of it. How do they do that? Papasok yung idea ng fluctuation. Fluctuation means um, there is a regular shifting up and down to the value of ano, of currency exchange rates. Ibig sabihin, halimbawa, this is the specific amount of exchange rate today. And at the end of the week, um, it will change very, very slightly into this. Nagkakaroon ng fluctuation. And when we say currency exchange rates, yun yung amount ng, ano, ng exchange rate. Yun. Tapos, dito papasok yung ideya ng mga investors to put up huge or a massive amount of money to gain profit. Kasi parang kung um, it's like a penny or a centavo or just a peso, you will exchange it to a hundred dollars or a fifty dollars. Um, di yun ganun na lang. But let's say the investor will put up a billion dollars. That's a whole different story. Kasi parang Estimatedly, that will make um, up for them up to millions of dollars without doing anything. Doon papasok yung currency speculation na sinasabi ko kanina. Kasi sa foreign exchange, globally, um, yung fluctuation na sinasabi ko kanina, um, there is a positive and a negative fluctuation. So, parang these investors, they have to speculate kung kailan may positive fluctuation. They will take advantage of that so that they will gain favor from that. And sasabayan nila yon ng malaking invest ng money. And according to the video, there is um, roughly 5 point something trillion na nagkakat na, ano, na daily na in-exchange na money globally. So, we, we could safely assume na um, money generating activity itong foreign exchange. So, I am very sorry for the unnecessary noises na naririnig nyo. Uh, please, please, please bear with me. And as I explained kanina yung foreign exchange, um, this table will will show you the top 10 traders in the world. Sila yung mga banks, digital banks na, na um, naniniwala sila na they, the, the foreign exchange is a money generating activity. And as we have come to understand more of global trade and finance, na realized namin na um, there's this thing such as more or most valued currency over other currency. What does it mean? Na yung value pala ng money ay hindi pare-parehas sa buong mundo. And according to the video, um, these currencies are more likely to be traded. And US dollars is the most valued currency in the whole world. Ibig sabihin, siya yung pinaka-high demand. US dollars is um, pinaka-pinagkakatiwala ang currency ng buong mundo that it constitutes 87% of the um, money trading sa buong mundo. So, what does it mean ba? Ibig sabihin, um, yung mga tao, we trust that the US will um, is having a good um, policies when it comes to their monetary things. Ibig sabihin, um, naniniwala tayo na stable yung currency na to. So, World Bank was formed through God or the Global Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which wasn't an, 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 an international organization. It was originally an 
agreement with a piece of international law in which countries signed on to in 1995 and there are 162 member states um, that's the majority of the world's states and each member gets one WTO then, meron din silang MFN status or the most favored nation status um, it just means that you have as a member, you have to treat each country the same. Walang favoritism. So you have to see everyone as the most favored one. So as I have learned, meron din silang dispute settlement mechanism. It is a standing body in which trade disputes between member nations can be heard and resolutions can be reached. Um, kasi sila... Um, yun nga, ang goal kasi, di ba, sabi ko kanina yung goal nila is to enable goods and services to flow to the end the world. Pero kapag may mga disputes kasi or may mga gulo, um, that goal will be now somehow impossible. Kaya, meron sila um, dispute settlement mechanism saan dinidinig yung mga disagreements at resolutions ay ginagawa. Paano, paano ba ito naging effective? Kasi, syempre, kapag di ka sumunod, potential economic repercussions ang kakaharapin ng bansa mo. With that, nagiging effective ang gantong mekanismo ng WTO. function of IMF or International Monetary Fund, IMF itself, it works to foster global growth and economic stability by providing policy advice and financing the members by working with developing nations to help them achieve macroeconomic stability and reduce poverty. IMF have 189 member countries. IMF provides short-term infusion of money to countries experiencing currency crisis. The first function of, of IMF is to monitor the economies of its 189 members countries. This activity known as economic surveillance through this, the IMF monitors development that affect members' economies as well as the global economy as whole. The next one is lend, lending to country or the IMF lends money to to nurture the economies of members' country with balance of payments problem in, and in, instead to fund individual project. This assistant can refle, replenish international reserves, stabilize currency, and strengthen condition for economic growth. In lending, in lending IMF have have two forms non-concessional interest rate and concessional term the third function of imf is capacity development or technical assistance in this imf is capacity development by providing assistant policy advice and training through its various programs this is very important for country with previous policy, policy failures, weak institution, or or scare, scarce resources. Through capacity development, the organization can help member to strengthen strengthen and improve growth in the in their economy economics economies and create job the one benefit of imf as a member is member country of the imf have access to information on 
the economic policy of all the members country countries the opportunity to influence others economic policy technical assistance on banking fiscal affairs and exchange matter financial support in times of payment difficulties and increased opportunity for trade and investment or the main function of IMA, IMF is to help one country or one country member if, if they have a problem in economic crisis. So good afternoon po. Uh, welcome po sa aking report ng saan Global Trading and Finance. Uh, naka-base po ako sa Group 4 doon po. Yun nga sa nasabing topic. Then sa IMF quotas and voting power. So vote power. So simulan po natin sa meaning ng IMF, International Monetary Fund. So parang silang quota-based institution, institution na kung saan nagpapalad sila ng mga kayamanan, true contribution ng iba't ibang bansa or na member dito na kung saan handa silang magpalend sa ibang bansa sa mga nangailangan ng bansa na kung saan nakakaranas ng currency crisis. So, what do you mean by currency crisis? So, parang nagkaroon na serious dog doon sa mismong central bank na isang bansa na kung saan yung sufficient na sufficient na resource ne, resources reserves nito ay doon nagpifix ng tamang foreign exchange rate so isang magandang halimbawa rito is yun nga halimbawa is ang isang bansa ay gumastos ng napakalaki like merong pandemic merong mga ganyan na hindi na pondo ang true taxes or doon mismo sa pondo ang nabawas so ano nangyayari doon then parang bumababa bumababa ang economical rates bumababa rin ng currency at doon nagkakaroon ng currency crisis then yun nga ang purpose ng ano nito ang lending bank na to is to help yun nga yung mga bansang yun na nangailangan ng urgent money so yun nga so, anong pinagkaiba niya sa other banks? Yung other banks, ang purpose nila is to par- is to gain some tubo or magkaroon sila ng tubo para umincrease sila. Ang IMF is to help other countries na nangangailangan through lending. Then, yun nga. So, yung isang bansa na sa sal sa IMF ay dadaan sa estimation na kung saan yung estimate nila yung GDP nito GDP then economical openness then yun nga economic variability international reserves na kung saan yun yung gagawang quota current formula ng IMF at ang gagawin nila ito i-estimate nila i-ranking nila do sa existing members nila na kung saan parang irarank nito or may nabasa rin ako at dito rin nababasa kung gaano ka limit lang yung pwedeng i-gain ng isang bansa through quota nila so ang ano dito kapag nag-increase ka ng quota increase yung quota mo mas nagkakaroon ka ng power so, next is system of conditionality. So, syempre, true lending, kailangan, paano, kaka- paano mo ito, ma- paano mababayaran ito? I- eh, international, ano ito. So, hindi mangyayari, mangyayari pa rin yung economical embargo in case na hindi ka sumunod sa condition. So, papautakin na nila na true condition. So, parang true condition. So, para sa mga condition ng mismong central bank nyo and mismo ng IMF, sa tulungan nila, mga increase of taxes, kung paano mag-deliberate, kung paano mo yung sistema mo babaguhin. 
parang pupunta ko sa isang kasulatan kung paano mo siya mababayaran, kung paano ka mag increase So, nag-monitor sila every five years. Pero hindi naman sila manda- mandatory na naniningil. So, pag-aaralan nila kung makikita nila na nag increase ka. So, kung hindi ka nag increase eh di medyo another five years ulit. Then kapag nag increase ka naman, then dyan magbabayad ka. ASAP, kailangan yan. Then, yun na. Then, ang quota denominated as the STR or Special Drawing Rights. So, ito yung parang gagawa nilang ang ginagawa nilang artificial currency or international currency ng IMF na kung saan yun yung gagamit nilang parang pakipagpalitan through accounts purposes only. So, parang legitimacy ng isang isang group yun, like Philippines Peso, like that, parang ganun. So, parang more on general siya. So, parang in, 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 general lang siya. Then, yun nga. So, kapag sumali ka dito, syempre, kinakailangan magdadam ka ng pera through your economy. Pero, ang mangyayari doon, magkakaroon ka naman ng benefits, benefits or privileges doon mismo sa IMF. Depende doon sa kota mo at sa inihulog mo doon sa mismong IMF. So, the more na mas malaki ang kinulog mo, then the more na mas mataas yung voting power mo sa pagdedesyon ng IMF. Dahil ang IMF, hindi sila yung parang nakadepende doon sa isang desisyon. Nakadepende sila doon sa desisyon ng majority or ng members nila. So, parang yun yung nangyayari. Then, Siyempre, papasok na naman ng P5 dito. Alam naman natin na mataas ang kanilang eh, economical budget or pera. So, nagkakaroon pa rin ng kahit papano ng lamangan. Pero, that's it eh. It's, ganun talaga ang ekonomiya. Kung kapag mas marami kang currency, marami kang pera, mas malakas ka. Then, yun po. Salamat po sa pakikinig sa aking report. Then, next na po ang aking ka-group. Sana po, mas maging maganda po ang ating buhay boy. Thank you po. Thank you. Dangers in global economic interdependence. So, kapag sinasabi natin na economic, economic globalization, parang it's a universal good. Pero kapag if there's something na good, meron din naman danger na kalakip nun. So, tungkol dito sa global economic interdependence, meron ng recent crisis na nangyari regarding dito. So, the first one is yung East, East Asia Currency Crisis. So, ito yung graph about sa mga Asian currency against dollar. So, kita naman dito yung pagbaba ng kita naman dito, kita naman dito yung pagbaba ng value ng Asian currencies against dollars. So, nagsimula itong East Asia currency crisis dahil dun sa mga currency speculators. So, kapag sinabi natin currency speculators, sila yung mga investors na nagtatry na maka-earn ng profit based on tiny fluctuations in the exchange rate of national currencies. So, ito yung mga trading. So, if familiar kayo sa Forex, parang ganun yung nangyayari or ganun yung ginagawa ng mga currency speculators. Parang nag invest sila ng money tapos paiikutin nila yon Bibili sila ng, for example, parang bibili sila ng parang for example, Philippine peso against um, US dollars. Tapos, syempre, alam naman natin na araw-araw or every minute nagbabago talaga yung exchange rates. So, parang, for example lang naman, halimbawa, 
tumaas yung presyo ng or mas mas tumaas yung value ng Philippine peso over US dollars. Edi makakagain ka doon. So parang ganun ganun yung way ng pagpapaikot ng pera ng mga hard speculators. Parang nag invest nga sila ng pera para maka-earn ng pro profit based doon sa mga fluctuations sa exchange rate ng mga national currencies. So, yung mga currency speculators na to, nag-start sila na mag-pull out ng mga investments nila sa Thai baht or yung Thai currency. Kasi, itong mga large investors na to, parang nakikita nila na hindi maganda or hindi magandang investment yung pag-invest sa Thai baht. So, syempre, large investors yun na nag-pull out. So, yung mga other investors, parang niisip na rin nila na mag-pull out din. So, doon nagsimula yung pagbaba ng purchasing power ng Thai baht, ganun na rin yung mga kalapit itong bansa. Kasi nga, we are interdependent din naman sa mga bansa. So, with, dito sa trading na to, nagkaroon ng crisis. So, itong crisis na to ay Hanggang ngayon naman, alam naman natin na hindi pa tayo mismo yung Pilipinas, hindi pa nakaka-recover. Kaya, itong East Asia currency crisis na to, meron siyang lasting impact na for 10 years or more, pa bago pa makarecover yung isang country. So, so, yung sunod naman na crisis is yung global financial crisis. So, nangyari siya mid- 20, 2008 to 2009. So, makikita naman natin sa graph na to kung ano yung epekto ng global financial crisis sa US. Nagkaroon ng mga aggregate losses from the financial bailout. Tapos, yung bumaba din yung actual values ng mga companies. So, kita dito kung gaano kalaki yung nawala sa panahon na to. Tapos, itong global financial crisis, nag-start siya dun sa mga very risky decisions na ginagawa pagdating sa lending o pagpapautang sa US. Parang, ito yung nag-offer ka ng mortgage sa isang tao na hindi naman kayang magbayad. So, lend parang lending and a nation that is fundamentally in debt na. Parang, nagpa-utang ka pa sa may utang na sa iba. Tapos, itong utang na to, binibenta dun sa mga companies o mga financial institu institutions. So, so, yun yung dalawang financial crisis na nag-arise recently na talagang naka-apekto dun sa bawat bansa, sa mga purchasing power ng mga currencies ng bawat bansa. So, Meron tayong dalawang quote na yung una galing kay Representative John Newstead ng Ohio House of Representatives at yung isa naman ay kay economist sa isang economist na si Paul Krugman. So, itong quote na to is just to broaden yung point of view natin about the economic interdependence or the economic globalization. So, we are saying na global economic interdependence greatly increases very every country's and every individual's exposure to risk. So, kapag ba, meron tayo mga bad decisions na nagagawa and naipon na naipon yung mga bad decisions na yon, maglalag siya sa global repercussions. So, since interdependent tayo, tayo or yung mga country sa isa't isa, malaki yung nagiging epekto nito financially at napaka tagal pa or ilang years pa yung kailangan natin para makapag recover. So, yun lang kapag merong economic globalization or yung economic globalization or economic interdependence. Meron naman talaga siyang 
magandang bagay na naidudulot sa atin or meron tayong mga benefits na nakukuha dito Pe, pero meron ding mga dangers So for our group's conclusion um, it's true no na since we are a global community it is also international organizations who can shape and direct um, global trade and finance and with that being said we can safely assume that we are truly truly interdependent with each other though this interdependence ay may risk and dangers natutunan din natin na may mga ginagawa naman itong mga international organizations na to para itong mga risk and dangers na to ay medyo masettle at um, maging possible yung goal na um, mag-flow freely yung mga goods and services in the world. Kasi that's how it works eh. We have to work with each other. We have to um, gain and give to each other, from and to each other para mag-work tong global economy natin. And thank you for learning with us. We hope that you've learned a thing or two. And please, please keep safe and stay safe and sound.